All right, welcome back, everyone. We're diving into Chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone today. The Man with Two Faces. Yeah, The Man with Two Faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you remember in the last chapter, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, right. they finally made it past Fluffy Yeah. and all those other insane obstacles guarding the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, it was amazing. So crazy. I was on the edge of my seat reading that. But, uh, well, this chapter is where things get Int super intense and dark. It takes a very dark turn, yeah. And right away, this chapter hits us with a huge twist. A big reveal, right. Right. It turns out, Professor Quirrell. Quirrell. Yeah. He's been the villain this whole time. Can you believe I it? how it's so unexpected, right? It's such a brilliant reveal, though. It is, it is. We've spent the entire book, like, suspecting Snape. Right, totally. And then... Bam! It's yeah. Quirrell. It's like, what? Yeah, what? It's mind-blowing. I gotta ask, though, like, looking back, what clues did Rowling give us that maybe we missed? Well, there are definitely some subtle hints throughout the book. Like, think about his stutter. Oh, yeah. He's always so nervous. And he's always kind of, like, jumpy, too. Exactly. And, like, his sudden interest in the dark arts, it's a little suspicious looking back. That's true. That came out of nowhere. No. It's amazing how she, like wove those details in yeah she's so clever so clever okay but then uh speaking of surprises yeah snape wasn't actually trying to kill harry what's the deal with that right so snape i mean his relationship with harry is like one of the most complicated oh yeah for, for sure right. in the whole series i mean he obviously hates harry hates him but we find out like he also feels this obligation to protect him right. because of a, a life debt he owed to Harry's dad, James. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really it's a conflict that shapes like all of Snape's actions in the rest of the books, too. That's so interesting. And this chapter is just full of these like huge revelations. Oh, yeah. definitely. So Quirrell admits he let the troll in. And we finally learn about his connection to Voldemort. It's mind blowing. It is. It is. So uh, what do you think about. Like, Voldemort choosing Quirrell as a host. Hmm. What does that tell us? Well, I think it shows just how ruthless Voldemort is. Yeah. Like, he'll use anyone to get what he wants. It doesn't matter who it is. It really doesn't. Yeah. Even someone seemingly harmless like Quirrell. Right. He sees weakness and vulnerability right. and he preys on it. Oh, that's creepy. And then there's that whole mirror of a rise scene. So clever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, it's a genius trap by Dumbledore. It is. So smart. I mean, Dumbledore knew that Voldemort would try to get the stone. Of course. But he knew Voldemort's desire for power would be his downfall. Totally. Like, that's how he designed the trap. Exactly. He made it so only someone who didn't want to use the stone could get it. It's so brilliant. So Voldemort never stood a chance. All right. Can we talk about the moment Quirrell unwrapped his turban? Ah, oh, that's terrifying. So creepy. And there's Voldemort's face on the back of his head. Fuck. It's so freaky. What do you think about that visual? It's really horrifying, and it shows how far Voldemort has fallen, you know? Yeah. He's not the, like, all-powerful wizard he once was. Oh, right. He's just a shadow. Wow. Like, clinging to life just barely. That's sad, actually. It is. And he's, he's surviving on unicorn blood. Ew. And he's... He's... Desperate for the elixir of life to get a new body. Oh, right, right. He's not doing well. And then he tries to, like, convince Harry to join him. I know. Using Harry's parents' death as leverage. <sighs> so messed up. It's cold. It's awful. What do you think about that? Well, I think this scene really shows the power of love. Yeah. Like, Harry's mom's sacrifice, it created this magical protection. Oh, right, that's why Cruel can't touch him. Exactly, because he gets burned. That's so powerful. Okay, and then... Uh, the fight between Harry and Quirrell. Oh, so intense. It's crazy. Like, one of the most emotional parts of the book. Totally agree. It's more than just, like, a physical fight. Oh, yeah. It's, like, good versus evil. Yeah, yeah. Love versus hate. Exactly. And then Harry just grabs Quirrell's face. It's instinct. Yeah. And it burns him, you know? It's so crazy. What's going on there? Well, I think it shows that Voldemort's evil. Yeah. It can be repelled by love. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, the love that's still protecting Harry, even though his mom is gone. Oh, that's powerful. Okay, so after that crazy battle, Harry wakes up in the hospital wing. He's all right. He's okay. Yeah. And he's got gifts from all his friends. Oh, that's so nice. I know. I love that part. And who could forget that Fred and George tried to send him a toilet seat? Classic Fred and George. Hilarious. But uh, things get serious again when Dumbledore tells Harry the stone's been destroyed. Oh. Yeah. And that Nicholas Flamel is going to die. 
That's so sad. It is. But then there's this really interesting conversation between Harry and Dumbledore about immortality. Right. And Dumbledore says that death is just another adventure. I love that part. I know. What do you think about that? It's such a like mature and complex thing to talk about in a children's book. It's deep. But I think it makes the series so special, you know? <laughs> right. Dumbledore's not afraid to talk about, like tough stuff and yeah. he presents death as like this natural part of life uh, even something to look forward to maybe and i love that he tells harry to call voldemort by his name me too yeah. it's such a small thing but it's powerful yeah like dumbledore knows fear thrives in the unknown so true. by not using you know who yeah harry takes away voldemort's power wow so smart. And then, of course, we have the end of year feast. Oh, my God. The Slytherin's about to win the House Cup again. For the seventh year in a row. I know. But then Dumbledore comes in with those last minute points. Total game changer. Such a great moment. I was cheering. It's not just about Gryffindor winning, though, right? No, no. It's about recognizing courage. Yeah, yeah. And integrity. Right. And characters like Neville. Oh, Neville. He's so great in this chapter. He really is. I mean, he helps win those crucial points. And he stands up to his friends. Right. He starts off so timid. So shy. And then he becomes this, like, unexpected hero. It's inspiring. It is. So the chapter ends on this kind of, like, bittersweet note, you know. Right. Harry has to go back to the Dursleys. Ugh, the Dursleys. I know. But he's not the same scared kid anymore. He's different now. Yeah. He's faced a dark wizard. Yes. He he's learned about his parents' sacrifice. Right. And he knows he's got this inner strength. It's a real turning point for him. It is. Okay, let's uh, let's pause here for now. When we come back, we'll go even deeper into the themes of this chapter and talk about how it connects to the rest of the story. Sounds good. I'm excited. Me too. Let's take a quick break. So we were talking about how Chapter 17 like really sets the stage for the rest of the series. Yeah, definitely. It introduces all these big themes that we see throughout the books. Oh, yeah, totally. Like one thing I was thinking about was how Rowling deals with death in this chapter. Yeah, it's heavy stuff. It is. It's pretty intense for a children's book. Right, but she handles it so well. Yeah, with like sensitivity and wisdom. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the reasons this book connects with like people of all ages for sure for sure like think about that conversation between harry and dumbledore in the hospital wing oh yeah i love that part dumbledore says death is just the next great adventure it's such a like different way of looking at it it's so interesting like it's so different from voldemort's uh obsession with immortality right voldemort's terrified of death totally he'll do anything to avoid it yeah even if it means like losing his humanity exactly and i think that fear is like what makes him so monstrous mm -hmm. he's so focused on staying alive that he forgets like how to actually live wow that's deep right and dumbledore on the other hand he's like accepted it the whole life and death cycle yeah yeah and that gives him like a peace Fendom. that voldemort could never have yeah, that's a really good point <laughs> speaking of uh interesting characters yeah snape Oh, Snape. This chapter gives us like this little glimpse into his character. He's so complicated. He is. He's so complex. He hates Harry, but then he risks his own life to protect him. It's it's crazy. It makes you wonder if he would have been different if James hadn't bullied him so much at school. That's that's a good question, you know? Like it seems like his time at Hogwarts really messed him up. Yeah, totally. Shaped his whole view of the world. And his resentment towards James, like spills over onto Harry. It's not really fair to Harry. No, not at all. Harry didn't do anything. But it's like Snape sees Harry as this this reminder. Of James. Yeah, of everything he lost. And everything he hates. Exactly. And yeah. that's I think that's part of what makes him such a great character. Right. We're always trying to figure him out. Yeah. Is he good? Is he bad? We don't know. That's what keeps us, like, hooked. It's brilliant writing, honestly. Rowling's so good at, like, creating these characters who are... They're not just good or bad. They're more than that. Exactly. They're complicated. Okay, let's talk about the mirror of Arised for a sec. Oh, the mirror. It's not just a magical object, right? No, it's it's so much more. It's an emblem. It shows us our deepest desires. Yeah, but like, that's not always a good thing. Right. Dumbledore even warns Harry about it. He says, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Exactly. Like, you can get trapped in those desires. And forget about reality. Totally. Um, and it's it's interesting that Harry can get the stone from the mirror 
because he doesn't actually want to use it. Right. He just wants to keep it safe. It's not about power for him. No, it's about protecting others. Which is so different from Voldemort. Oh, yeah. Voldemort just wants the stone for himself. And make himself immortal. It's all about him. And Harry's like, no, this is about everyone. It's such a, like, powerful difference. It shows how different their values are. For sure. Okay, what about the ending of the chapter? It's so bittersweet. I know. Gryffindor wins the house cup. I was cheering. It was amazing. But then Harry has to go back to the Dursleys. Ugh, I know. I hate the Dursleys. But, I mean, Harry's not the same kid anymore. He's tougher now. Yeah, he's faced Voldemort. And won. It's a huge turning point for him. Okay, let's pause here for a second. Okay. When we come back, we'll wrap up this chapter and talk about some of the bigger questions it raises. Sounds good. Okay, so we're back for the final part of our deep dive into Chapter 17. I can't believe how much we've already talked about. It's such a rich chapter. We've covered Quirrell, the power of love, Voldemort, Gryffindor winning the House Cup. It's amazing how much happens in just one chapter. Right. But there's still more to unpack. Oh, definitely. Like, one thing that really stood out to me was how this chapter makes us think about good versus evil. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not always so clear cut. It's not black and white. Exactly. Like with Snake. He's he's always portrayed as this bad guy. Yeah. But then he risks his life to protect Harry. Right. It makes you think, like, maybe he's not all bad. Maybe there's more to him. Yeah, maybe. And even Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Yeah, he's like the wisest wizard. Right. But he makes mistakes, too. He does. Like putting the stone where Harry could find it. Yeah, knowing how much Harry wanted a family. It's almost like he was setting Harry up to face Voldemort. It makes you wonder. Yeah, but I think it shows that even the best people... They're not perfect. Right. They can make bad choices. It makes the story more real. For sure. And it makes us question, like, what is good and what is evil? Yeah, it's not always so simple. And speaking of complicated things... Yeah. Let's talk about sacrifice. Oh, there's so much sacrifice in this chapter. So much. Harry's parents, Ron in the chess game. Yeah, they all put others before themselves. It's a really powerful theme, you know? Like, what are we willing to sacrifice for the people we love? That's a big question. And it makes you think about the impact those sacrifices have. Right, like how they affect the people left behind. It's a lot to think about. And then there's the whole idea of choice. Choice. Yeah, like Harry has to make all these tough decisions. Oh, like whether to trust Quirrell. Or to face Voldemort. It's a lot of pressure. It is. It is. And his choices determine what happens in the story. That's so true. It's like a, a reminder that we all have the power to choose. Yeah, even when things are tough. And that our choices have consequences. Yeah, they really do. Okay, so as we wrap up our deep dive, I want to leave you with one last thought. Okay. At the end, Dumbledore tells Harry, to the well-organized mind... Death is but the next great adventure. I love that line. Me too. Yeah. What do you think it means? I think Dumbledore saying that death is just a part of life. Like it's natural. Exactly. And that we shouldn't be afraid of it. Huh. Like maybe it's something to look forward to. That's a really interesting way to think about it. I think so too. And maybe it ties back to sacrifice. How so? Well, like, even though our lives end, our yeah. choices, our actions, they still matter. Right. They make a difference. And that's how we leave our mark on the world. That's a really powerful idea. It is. So that's it for our deep dive into Chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This was fun. I know. It's amazing how much there is to discover in this book, even after all these years. Totally agree. Thanks for listening, everyone. And keep those wands at the ready for our next deep dive.